Okay, we have one more example uh, of the gradient projection algorithm to talk through. Um, I'll give you the, the, the overview, the feeling for how this, um, this works and give you, talk about it from a sort of high level. Um, all the working out is something that you should do uh, yourself. Um, and you should, you know, the, you can look through the notes uh, for this example um, to, to check your working. I'll talk about how it works and hopefully based on everything we've uh, talked about so far with gradient projection, you should be able to see how this thing is working. So it's a final example, and this is a complete gradient projection algorithm uh, this time, not this incomplete version uh, where we, um, you know, we find out that we get stuck. We're not gonna get stuck now because we know how to relax constraints and things like this. Okay, so here is the um, uh, here is the example. Uh, so it's um, uh, we're going to use a full gradient projection algorithm to minimize pretty simple function, right? So just a quadratic function, and you know where the global minimizer is of that is. It's a zero zero. It's a two dimensional function. Uh, we've just got two constraints here uh, to deal with. So um, uh, one minus x one has got to be less than or equal to zero. So x one's got to be bigger than one. Uh, and 2x1 uh, plus x2 has got to be greater than or equal to 4. So we're going to start at a point that's in the feasible region here, uh, 2, 4. Okay, there's what my feasible region looks like, right? So you can see the, uh, the orange lines show you the level curves of this quadratic function, uh, which um, you know, are centered on the origin and are circles. This is a nice simple symmetrical function. Uh, and then, you know, one, the blue curve gives me X has got to be bigger than one, and X has got to be above the diagonal line. So I'm going to start my uh, gradient projection algorithm at two, four, which is in the feasible region. So that's good. So we start at um, two, four, and then what's the first step of the um, uh, of gradient projection going to do? Well, it's going to, um, it's going to be essentially steepest descent. It's going to be exactly steepest descent. The reason for that is when I form my matrix, my projection matrix, uh, PS, uh, that turns out to be one, uh, because X naught is in the interior uh, of this um, feasible region. So both constraints are inactive. Um, you know, PS is just an identity matrix. Uh, and so I just take a steepest descent. A steeper, uh, take a steepest ascent set, step straight towards the origin uh, in that direction. And so, you know, um, if we were doing uh, unconstrained uh, optimization, we would uh, uh, go towards the minimizer here and we would go towards the global minima uh, in exactly one step because, you know, we're pointing directly towards the, uh, towards the origin here. So because we're doing uh, constrained uh, optimization, we have to stop Right, when we hit our constraints, uh, we stop. So we find the gamma um, that, uh, 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 that minimizes um, uh, the cost function along this black line, uh, but lambda has got to be um, such that, um, it's got to be such that uh, we don't step outside of the feasible region. So here we actually hit, um, you know, the, um, the intersection between our two constraints just by chance, um, exactly. So after X1, both constraint one and constraint two are active. So, you know, the active constraint set is one, two, right? So uh, there's nowhere else I can move, right? So when I take uh, step two here, uh, I actually get that U equals zero, right? This is my problematic uh, version of the, um, uh, of the, this is where something special needs to happen uh, for my gradient, uh, my gradient projection algorithm, because I can't step anywhere else uh, that keeps me uh, on both constraint one and constraint two. There's only one point where they intersect. So what do we have to do? Uh, we have to form M transpose omega uh, uh, and set that equal to negative gradient of F, right? So there's what M transpose turns out to be. Again, you should construct this yourself. Uh, and solve this um, system of equations yourself. If you do so, you're going to get omega is equal to uh, negative three, two, which is going to tell me that I should throw away constraint number one because the, uh, the smallest value of this omega is the first uh, value. Uh, and that means throw away constraint number one. So if I throw away constraint number one, I'm going to need to take my next step along 
constraint number two. So along the diagonal line here, which is it should send me towards the um, towards the, the, the over the true minimizer. And that's what we do. So in step number three, uh, to get to point X2, uh, I need to uh, remove constraint number one. So my active constraint set becomes just constraint two. Uh, and so I delete the first row from M. Um, and so my new M is negative two, negative one. Then what does gradient projection do? It says form the null space, uh, find the null space uh, of M uh, and then use that to create my projection matrix uh, and tell me how far to, uh, to step here. So uh, that's what we do and we step to X2. Then we need to check this, uh, we need to form this equation M transpose omega again with my new M, uh, set that equal to uh, negative gradient of F uh, at X2. Uh, so M transpose, so because M was negative two, negative one, we get this. Uh, and now the negative gradient of F evaluated at X2 uh, is pointing back towards the origin here, negative eight fifths, negative four fifths. If you solve that equation, then you get omega equals four fifths. And that's, um, and that's positive. And that's what tells me uh, that I can, I'm at the true minimizer now. Uh, I'm at the overall minimizer uh, for this problem. Uh, I can't step any further. Um, and so we're done. Uh, and, so, uh, and, and so that's it. So that's the gradient projection algorithm uh, in, you know, in full. That's, that's everything that it does in this case. Um, I've skipped the mathematics there. I've talked you through the, um, uh, through the algorithm. What I want you to do is go back, uh, make sure you can do by hand um, every step of that algorithm uh, so that you can check um, that you really understand what's going on. You can form these things and you can do, you can, you can do the full algorithm. But that's what's going on. Same thing again, but if we try a slightly different starting point. So if we, um, uh, if we start at 1.54 uh, rather than 2.4, um, well, I mean, if we understand the gradient projection algorithm um, uh, uh, well enough here, we should be able to figure out what the algorithm is going to do without actually needing to go and do the mathematics. So there's, um, so if you draw a good enough picture, uh, you can do this by hand. And hopefully we're gonna end up with the minimizer, finding the minimizer at the same place. So you can trace through uh, in your mind, if I take a steepest descent direction, and because I'm starting at a different starting point, I now hit uh, the blue constraint. And so to get down to a point uh, down here on the green line, which is where the, the minimizer is, I'm gonna need to move along the blue uh, curve to the intersection of the two, and then along the green line to get there. And that's exactly what gradient percent, uh, sorry, what gradient projection does. So first, uh, we take a step, a steepest descent step, which makes sure that we don't leave uh, my feasible, uh, my feasible set. So I hit the wall of the feasible set. I hit my constraint, and then I stay there, right? So I can only so uh, lambda's got to be between a zero and some value such that I don't uh, step outside of the feasible region. So we do that, we end up on the blue constraint. Then um, when I'm on the blue constraint, uh, I can stay, you know, my, um, uh, uh, my active constraint is just constraint one now, right? So I can uh, find a feasible direction that keeps me on constraint one. Uh, and I'm gonna uh, take a step there uh, that, ends, that takes me to the corner of the two, uh, the intersection between the two constraints. So now u is equal to zero. Now I'm back where I uh, was uh, before. So u is equal to zero. I have to form m transpose omega, set it equal to uh, negative gradient f, uh, and then solve. I do that again. Um, and so we find that we have to uh, relax constraint one, uh, just uh, stay on constraint two, and move in that direction, um, in the direction of negative ps gradient of f of x2. Um, if we do that, we head to the same x3 and we end up at the minimizer again. That's it. That's the gradient projection algorithm. That's the whole thing. That's everything that can happen with it. Notice that um, you know, it's efficient, right? It's, a, it's an efficient simplex type algorithm that sends us around essentially the outside of my feasible region 
uh, towards the minimizer without having to, um, to check laboriously every possible combination uh, of constraints. Um, the picture uh, way back when told us a thousand, uh, thousand words here. It explained the whole story that there is there. You can go through the mathematics uh, of this example, make sure that you can do all of these calculations and show numerically that you get to these same, um, uh, these same solutions, but that's the idea. It's a really nice algorithm uh, and it allows us to uh, navigate the space um, of really large, you know, really large numbers of constraints, so really heavily, hugely constrained problems very efficiently. It's an incredibly powerful algorithm. 